Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review with the 2008 crime comedy rock and roller. Now, before I get around to sharing more of my thoughts on this film, I would like to give a special shout out to Leon for requesting this review. And if there's another film, TV show, or topic that you'd like to see me discuss in the future, feel free to donate to either my PayPal or to my Patreon. The link to both is in the video description down below, and I will try to get to your request as soon as I possibly can. Now, Rock and Rolla is one of those films that I honestly didn't know that much about. And honestly forgot it even existed until uh, it was recommended to me. And after seeing it, I honestly feel it's a, it's, it's a gem. I thought this was really good. Uh, I would actually rank it pretty high on Guy Ritchie's uh, uh, filmography. At least for me personally. He wrote and directed the film. And... Prior to the release of this movie, he did a couple movies that did really poorly in terms of the box office and in terms of critical reputation. And it almost was at the point where it seemed like, oh, you know, maybe maybe Guy Ritchie was a flash in the pan. Maybe he's reached his limits. Maybe he's reached his peak. Uh, maybe he's never going to be the same. And... With this film, he goes back to his roots, to films like, you know, Lock, Stock, and Smoke and Barrels, and so on and so forth. And it didn't do that well critically or financially, sadly. It did do better than the uh, the previous two films that he did, but it, it still wasn't a, a massive hit. But it's a film that, because of its cast, because of the approach that Guy made with it, because of the quality of the writing, because of a lot of other elements, it's gotten a new life over the years. And there's a lot of people who are talking about how this is an underrated gem. This is some of Guy Ritchie's best work. And it was... In a lot of ways, despite the fact that it didn't reflect on the box office receipts or with some of the reviews at the time, it was a return to form for Guy. And it was, it, it was a film that enabled him to be able to take that momentum and utilize it for uh, future films in his filmography. And I think his direction in this is great. I thought he did a really good job directing this film. This is a very high energy movie. This film honestly doesn't have very many scenes where things slow down or even stop. It's just constantly moving and it's constantly on the run. And Guy did a great job making the film reflect that. It, it really did have this manic just pace and energy and, and feel and flow and and visual style to it there's a lot of uh, uh direction in the film that is a little out of control it's wild in terms of the camera angles in terms of the techniques in terms of pan zooms uh, uh establishing shots and so forth like it is a film that has a lot of wild stuff in terms of the the, the camera work and i think for certain films, that can be a detriment, that can be a distraction. But for this movie, I think it's it, it, it's something that makes it, in a lot of ways, what it ultimately is. And it also makes it better. So, yeah, I, I loved Guy Ritchie's direction in this. I thought he did an amazing job with the film. Just slick and stylish and, and, and rough and tumble. And it was just... It, it was just really fun to watch just to see what kind of uh directing uh uh risks and and um chances he was going to take uh when it comes to the film's visual style the screenplay by guy Ritchie, i think 
there are some points where some of the subplots and some of the characters aren't as strong as others. But for the most part, I think it was a pretty, pretty good script. Uh, it deals with a lot of people like the Wild Bunch and the Russian mobster guys and uh, Lenny, who's, you know, part of the, the, the mob and, you know, Archie, Lenny Cole's right hand man. And there's the stuff involving a real estate uh, deal. And it's not like a heist film. If anything, like there's a good chunk of the movie where they're trying to get something back, which is a painting that was stolen. And I think that was a nice twist on things. It's not a heist film. It's actually a movie where they're trying to get something back that was stolen. And return it to somebody. And then in the process, there's these double cross uh, uh, dealings and and twists when it comes to certain characters and their and who they are. And that definitely did add a, a, a good amount of added intrigue to the script, like stuff involving uh, the character played by Tom Hardy. Um his character, uh, Handsome Bob. Like, having a film like this feature a male character who comes out of the closet and is gay and they don't necessarily use him as a punchline, like, that was really, uh, in a lot of ways, something that was ahead of its time. And the idea of the musician who fakes his own death and is involved with all of this and is the the stepson of the mob boss that added its own bit to it as well as his talent managers and Mickey and Roman that are trying to find him so the script always had this consistent element of tension throughout for me whether it's trying to find the painting uh, or trying to find uh, uh, Toby Kevill's character, there was always this kind of this consistent bit of tension throughout. But I will say that there were there are certain subplots that are stronger than others, like this stuff involving uh, Fandy Newton's character, uh, Stella wasn't really the best especially when they're trying to make it into some sort of love story between her and Gerard Butler's character one two um but for the most part I, I felt that there was enough going on in terms of the action uh when it comes to the comedy that it, it wasn't too boring when it comes to the narrative and the twist at the end I I loved I thought making Lenny the the guy who's the informer the the rat uh I thought that was a really nice choice and it and honest I didn't expect it uh so I felt that was really clever and it made for a very satisfying way to end the film and there's just a lot of moments in the movie that I think are genuine gold like the scene involving one, two and his crew when they're trying to t steal the, the next, uh, um, drop off from the Russians. And it's just this insane scene that just goes to just ridiculous levels of craziness with the Russians and, and uh, one, two, trying to run away from them and the car accidents and then the hand to hand combat and and these Russians being like the Terminator. Like it, it, it was it was a lot of fun. And. I genuinely feel that the the bad guys or at least the, at least the characters that are 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 worse than the other 
bad guys because it's one of those films where everyone is basically a criminal but some are worse than others and tom wilkinson's character lenny cole like the way that he was written like this guy was a absolute scumbag like this guy was a scumbag of the highest order uh, a real piece of work and a real piece of shit but the way that things were written with the guy there was this there was a certain comedic undertone to it that I felt led to some really good bits of dark humor and some genuinely funny moments of slapstick involving that character. Like when he, he initially realizes that the painting is gone, like something happens to the chair that he's in or he falls out of his chair and the way that it was set up, I thought it was just really funny. And there's a lot of other sort of moments like that throughout the film in terms of dialogue between characters like the dialogue between gerard butler's character one two and bob and how bob is just fucking with him you know and and and, and uh one two he has to just sit there and take it because there's this whole moment where he thought that he he bob was going away for prison and when bob revealed that he's gay he had this little slow dance with him. And so it's one of those things where he, he did something that other people could maybe interpret as him, him also being gay. And it's not like there's anything wrong with that, but I felt the way that it they handled the homoerotic sort of elements of it. And, and just the kind of uh, just back and forth with Bob and one, two, where Bob has, the, he kind of has this, it, he, he's he got this extra one up, so to speak, over one, two now. And he just constantly ribs him about it. And the way that it was handled, I thought it was, I thought it was genuinely funny. And it didn't come across to me personally like it was exploitative. I could see where some people might see that the stuff involving these characters is something that's homophobic. But I didn't view it that way myself. Honestly, I thought I thought it was the opposite. I felt it was, you know, Bob is confident. He's confident in his sexuality, and he's he's ready and willing to joke around, and and be open about it with his friends. Um. And yeah, I I liked a lot of other different sort of stuff, even the lines of dialogue that were given for Mickey and Roman. It's just one of those films where there is a certain authenticity as well when it comes to the dialogue, when it comes to the way that these characters are portrayed, but there's also this larger than life pulp uh, uh, element to it. And it's just one of those movies where despite it being focused on these characters who do criminal acts it's fun it's got a good sense of fun to it and that really comes down to the script and i thought there was a good amount of variety in terms of the type of uh jobs that they were doing uh setting things up in terms of uh this uh real estate deal i thought was a good direction to take things the way that it sets up the characters the the wild bunch and the way it also uh, uh, places uh, flashbacks, stuff that happened years earlier in the story, I felt that was really well done because it added an extra layer of intrigue uh, and, and, and made the narrative as a whole more compelling. So, yeah, overall, I thought I did. I felt it was a pretty solid script. And the cast, I thought, was fantastic. I mean, this is a really terrific cast. I mean, Gerard Butler is one, too, who's the leader of the Wild Bunch. He was so charismatic. He was so charming. Uh, I, I I loved him in this film. Like, he was just, it was just so much fun to say, see him play this role. You could tell that he really liked playing this character. It was infectious, if you ask me, when it comes to every scene that he was in. Uh, Tom Wilkinson, like, the character he plays is an absolute scumbag, but he played it so well and he did it in a way that was just so fun. 
Like you could tell that he was relishing in playing this just absolute uh, <laughs> twat. You know, I mean, twat isn't really, really the right word, but like this just just this total piece of garbage. Like this guy who's just an absolute cock, and he just played it in a way that was the right amount of camp to the point where it was just so entertaining. It was so inter and enjoyable to watch him play this character and to see him get his comeuppance as well. Uh, Thandie Newton, she was sexy. She was, she was, she was hot. She really didn't have that much to do other than that. Mark strong. I thought he was really, uh, um, strong in the role. Uh, uh, no pun intended, as uh, Lenny's right-hand man and the narrator of the film. I, I, I definitely do feel he was the right pick for the narration. And uh, I liked it. I liked his performance. I liked his character. There was a certain sense of humor that that character had, too, which I, which I did appreciate. And the fact that despite what he does, he does have uh, some morals. So it made the character somewhat likable compared to Tom Wilkinson. Where he's the kind of guy that you love to hate, but morally that guy is just completely corrupt. But Mark Strong, you kind of got the sense that, yeah, he is not the best. He's not really a good guy, but he's good when it comes to trusting and being there for his men, than for the wild bunch. And you definitely did kind of, you did ultimately by the end of the film, you kind of felt for him and the other guys in the gang because they got screwed over by, by their boss who did, who essentially ratted them out to the police and they missed a good chunk of their life. And in some instances spent years and in, multiple years in prison because of this guy. So there's definitely a little bit of sympathy that you have for these characters because of that. Uh, Idris Elba, he was incredible as Mumbles. Another really charismatic performance by Idris Elba. He had great chemistry with with Gerard Butler, and I just really liked the scenes featuring the two. Uh, Tom Hardy, he was terrific as Bob. Honestly, it's one of my favorite Tom Hardy performances that I've seen. Like he was just. He did. He was just a lot of fun. Like he had some really good uh, uh, lines and was genuinely funny. And I, I, I thought it was a likable performance. And I, I, I thought Tom handled what, in a lot of ways, is kind of a difficult role because of him being, you know, a, a, a closeted gay man who has like a, a crush on one two. But the way that he handled it, I thought was, um, I thought it was effective, and it wasn't anything that was too heavy-handed or too one note. Uh, Carol Roden as the Russian uh, guy, business uh, guy, he was effective for the little scenes that he was in. Definitely was pretty intimidating, if you ask me. Toby Kebbell as Johnny Quid. Uh, he. Total junkie, uh, like a, a guy who was just a, an absolute uh, wanker. But the way that the guy played the character, it was fun to watch as well in a train wreck kind of way. Ludacris and Jeremy Piven as Mickey and Roman. I really liked the scenes with those two. I felt both of them were a really surprisingly effective odd couple. You wouldn't necessarily think that those two would be a good pairing, but in this film, it shows that they they genuinely are. And definitely want to give some some uh, uh, kudos to uh, Dragon uh, Mikanovic as Victor uh, Omovich's right hand man. Um, some of the other actors and actresses like Gemma Arterton as June. Um, and apparently speaking of the cast, Jason Statham was supposed to be in the film, but there was a scheduling conflict. So it made it so he wasn't able to be in it. And honestly, 
yeah, it would have been nice to see Jason Statham in the film, but I'm glad that he wasn't because it gives rock and roll its own unique and, and different kind of vibe and feel to it that Statham isn't in the movie and he's not a main focus like he was in the other uh, three films uh, that um, guy directed before this. And I felt that from a cinematography perspective, I felt that it looked good. It does have a very brown, beige uh, look to the film visually, almost sepia tone. And I can see why that might be a turnoff for some folks or for some people who uh, saw the film. It didn't bother me, but there were some times where I admit I would have liked a, a little bit more color, but it's it was an aesthetic choice that uh, for the most part it, it it didn't it didn't hurt the film for me but it, it's one of those things where I, I would have liked a little bit more color but the way that it is i could deal with it um the editing by james herbert i thought he did a, a, i thought he did a great job i thought it was a really well edited film there are certain scenes in the film that are funny and as exciting and as thrilling as they are because of the editing. Like there's a sex scene with uh one, two and uh Thandy Newton's character, uh, Stella. And it's, I thought it was really hilarious. And the reason for it is because of the editing, but it's also because of the fact that apparently I think there was something, there was some kind of complication when it comes to the shoot and so to work around it, they just decided to turn it into a, a comedic scene. And they did that by doing a lot of the quick cuts and editing it the way that, th that they did. Um, I can see why some people might look at the editing and think it's a bit much, but I think for this film, it worked really well. It just added an extra bit of energy to the movie. The music by Steve Isles, not what I would consider to be incredible work, but it fit for the film. And there isn't really a lot of original uh, scored music in the film. The movie features more uh, songs and stuff like that than uh, original uh, music pieces. And the songs that they pick, I, I felt fit. I, I, I felt the, the songs that were handpicked by Guy Ritchie and everybody... Like, they fit the film, they fit the vibe, they fit the overall tone of what they were trying to do with it. And I think for, like, a, a film that's like 114 minutes, I felt it went by at a pretty brisk pace. I didn't find it to be that boring. I didn't find it to be that uninvolving. And, yeah, I thought it was just a, it was a fun movie. Um, Roger Ebert. He gave it three stars. He he talks about how it doesn't slow down enough to be really good. Uh, but it's it's nice to see people having fun. And yet that's true. And I think it still is really good, though. Like, yeah, it doesn't slow down, but that's the point. It's, it's That's one of the things that I like about the film is that it's just constantly on the run. Like... That one scene where Gerard Butler's character is running away from the Russians. That's the movie. It's just constantly got this quick and uh, breakneck pace to it. And it's wild. And it comes with some uneven moments because of that. But that's the reality of a scenario where it's a race against time. So I I, I, I felt that... Yeah, I... I really saw that this was a movie that really clicked for the most part. I, I really enjoyed it. It was a, it was a genuine surprise. Like I didn't expect a whole lot going in with this film and it exceeded my expectations and then some. So I would definitely recommend it, especially if you're a fan of Guy Ritchie's films like Snatch and so on and so forth, or these kind of movies about British gangsters or just, you know, movies about gangsters in general. I think there's there's a lot to to like about Rock and Rolla, and I, it's a shame that we didn't get the sequel. I would love to see the sequel. I'd love to see more of the Wild Bunch. I'd love to see these characters again. 
I want to see the real rock and roll. I'd rather see the real rock and roll than some of the other sequels that Guy Ritchie has done. Uh, or some of the other sequels that we've actually seen at this point. Um, we have a Smoking Aces 2, for instance. I'd rather have Rock and Rolla 2. But that's just me. That's just my thoughts on the film. And as always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you later. See ya.